So the IUCN Red List is a fundamental part of how we do conservation here at ZSL because it allows us to prioritise species that are most at risk of extinction. On the Edge of Existence programme, which is the programme that I work on, we focus on evolutionarily distinct and globally endangered species. So what that means is if a species is evolutionarily distinct, it has evolved on its own for millions of years, it has very few close living relatives and it's unique in the way that it looks, lives and behaves. Globally endangered means that it belongs to one of the top three categories of threat um, as according to the IUCN Red List. So that's critically endangered, endangered and vulnerable. So by combining this measure of threat and uniqueness, we can prioritise species that we believe are most in need of conservation. So these are amazing species that are at risk of being lost forever. The mountain chicken frog is a critically endangered frog found only on the islands of Dominico and Montserrat. The frogs used to be very widely distributed in the Caribbean, living on about six or seven islands, but now they're just found on two islands, and populations there have crashed due to the emerging infectious disease, Kichwidiomycosis, which the mountain chickens appear to be very susceptible to. ZSL is very active with the mountain chickens, and we're heavily involved in the conservation program for the species. So we maintain a, a biosecure group here at ZSL London Zoo and we breed the frogs for release. So in June this year we sent back 50 frogs back to Montserrat where they were released onto, onto the island and tracked by conservation biologists on Montserrat to actually see how the frogs acclimatise in, in the wild and how they dealt with chytrid which is still present. The IUCN Red List for us is a really important tool um, when we're developing the collection plan for both our institution and also on a European level, we use the red list as a very important tool in order for us to categorize the species that we're trying to keep and that we, we want to keep. So um, on a European level, the regional collection plan is based around um, a whole collection of different institutions throughout Europe that are working collectively to try and prioritize species for conservation within our collections. And without a tool like the, the red list that allows us to quickly reference and see if a species is critically endangered or extinct in the wild, it becomes quite difficult to prioritize. So ZSL is um, very much supportive of IUCN's work and particularly um, when we're looking at freshwater fishes, ZSL has contributed to supporting the Riverbank Project, which is a new IUCN initiative which aims to try and completely assess all of the regions around the world uh, for their freshwater species that haven't yet been assessed. So the Riverbank will be looking at trying to assess species from the Southeast Asia region and, and parts of South and Central America that haven't yet been, been assessed by IUCN. And ZSL is very much supportive of the Riverbank project and will continue to support IUCN so that more species can be assessed. The Ethiopian wolf has been classified by the IUCN Red List as endangered. It is not only the rarest canid in the world, but also the most endangered African carnivore. Currently, there are less than 500 individuals surviving in six isolated populations in the mountains of Ethiopia. The main threat to the survival is the small population size and the isolation of these populations. Since uh, the early 90s, uh, we at CEDESAL and the Institute of Zoology has been studying the uh, current genetic structure and the historical patterns of gene flow among all populations of Ethiopian wolf. Our results indicate that uh, translocations can be done with using a wolf from the same mountain blocks. This will um, uh, artificially create a dispersal of individuals. Uh, because not only by moving individuals, we not only we are going to bring new genes into each population, but we also need to be careful that these individuals are adapted to the local conditions. So by moving individuals within the same mountain blocks, we can hopefully uh, do both, increase the genes and at the same time maintain the local adaptations.